Welcome to this HUD-sponsored webinar on the basics of using version 3.0 of the CNA eTool, which will launch on August 24, 2020. This webinar is being recorded. One of the four sessions of this webinar will be posted on the HUD Exchange website and will be accessible on the CNA eTool page of the HUD Exchange in the CNA eTool page of the HUD.gov website. <coughs> It will be available sometime after the fourth session is delivered live. There will be no live questions during this webinar, and participants will be muted throughout the presentation. If you have any questions, however, please enter them in the WebEx Q&A box on your screen, as shown on this slide. We will do our best to get to as many of your questions as possible during the final segment of this presentation. If you are experiencing any technical issues related to WebEx, please provide a description of what you are experiencing in the chat box and send it to the host ICF event. Toward the end of the presentation, we will be streaming one video. During this video, the sound will come through your computer speakers, so please make sure your computer speakers are turned on at that time. We will let you know when to do this when we get to that point in the session. At this time, I'd like to introduce Tony Gallo of ICF, who will be the presenter during this webinar. Thank you, Nicole. Again, I'm Tony Gallo of ICF, and I'm very happy to be with you today. ICF is a contractor under HUD's Community Compass Cooperative Agreements. We've actually been supporting HUD's Office of Multifamily Production for the past several years. I may have met some of you when I did in-person training on the legacy CNA eTool a few years ago. Also with me today are HUD's Kevin Hahn and Sean Cortapassi, our CNA and HUD Secure Systems Access experts, who will be answering questions during the Q&A period at the end of today's session. Also with us are Nicole Hassman, our webinar guru, and Chris Richmond, who will be fielding your questions later during this session. If you attended the Getting Started webinar, then you know that the new version of the CNA eTool is a fully web-based application. It's more advanced and easier to use than the legacy dual system consisting of an Excel spreadsheet and web portal. Version 3.0 streamlines the process of preparing, submitting, reviewing, and approving capital needs assessments. There are no separate portals and no emailing of Excel files between parties. Once you're in the system, and depending upon your role, you may view, review, enter information, and submit the CNA all using a single new user interface. I know we tend not to like change. We know that change can be uncomfortable until we get used to a new process, a tool, or policy. However, we truly believe that you will find version 3.0 much easier to use than the legacy system. First of all, the input screens are very intuitive. You can easily send CNAs back and forth between partners within the system. You don't have to recreate the, the wheel when HUD returns a CNA back to you. And reviewing the information entered is much easier because of the streamlined formatting. HUD will provide you with various resources to assist you in navigating version 3.0, including this webinar. Some of these resources will be mentioned later in this presentation. So, the purpose of this webinar is to ensure that users understand how to use the user dashboard and how to navigate through the CNA eTool and submit a CNA. First, We'll talk about the user dashboard and the process used to create, assign, send, and submit a CNA. After logging into the CNA eTool, user, users will first see their personalized dashboard. The dashboard is the default home screen of the CNA eTool for external users. It displays CNAs that are relevant to you. From here, you can quickly access CNAs that are in your possession, are in your partner's firm's possession, or have been submitted to your approving agency, such as HUD. What you're seeing on the slide here is the dashboard for the submitters 
who are generally lenders. You can click on the triangles next to each heading to reveal the CNAs in each category, my desk, my partner's desk, and with agency. Users can access a CNA by clicking on the blue assessment ID number located next to the property name. On the left-hand side of the dashboard, there are two vertical tabs, My CNA and Search. The My CNA tab has preset quick filters that show numbers of CNAs that you are working on sorted by type and program and status. New CNAs are also created by the submitter from the dashboard. Create a new CNA by clicking on the Start New Assessment button at the top right of the user dashboard. Okay, so we'll now go over these fields one by one. The My Desk field of the dashboard contains CNAs that are currently in your possession. These CNAs are in your possession because you are actively working on them. Your My Desk field will only show CNAs linked to you as an individual. However, you can search for any CNAs that have been initiated by or assigned to your firm by clicking on the Search tab at the top left of the screen. Use the search filter to access all the CNAs within your organization. We'll talk more about the search function later. The My Partners Desk field contains CNAs that are currently possessed by a partner organization. A partner organization is established when a CNA is sent from you to an organization that you selected as your preparer or when you receive a CNA from your submitter. Again, this will be explained in more detail later. The WIP agency field contains CNAs that have been submitted to the approving agency, such as Hotter USDA. The new assessments received field is available for users who are preparers, usually needs assessors. It contains CNAs that have been sent to your organization by a partner submitter, such as a lender, and have not yet been claimed by anyone within your firm. Anyone within the organization can take possession of the CNA at any point. In general, you can take possession of a CNA simply by opening one, making any edits, and saying, saving it. Once you save any edits you've made by clicking on the Save button on any of the screens, the CNA will now appear in your My Desk field going forward until someone else takes possession of it by doing the same. This can come in very useful when someone needs to sub in for a coworker that is out of the office. Now we'll discuss on the left sidebar portion of the dashboard. The left sidebar has two tabs, My CNAs and Search. As we mentioned earlier, the My CNAs tab contains quick preset filters. Selecting these filters will only display the CNAs that you are or were in possession of by CNA type and program and by status. The number in the blue rectangle indicates the number of CNAs that are applicable to that filter. Click on the filter to only display CNAs in that category. For example, if you click on 221D4, only the one CNA that you're working on that fits this description will be displayed. You can also quickly filter by status. The statuses are listed on the resulting list will only include CNAs in that status. Next, we'll discuss the Search tab. The Search tab also has quick filters similar to the My CNAs tab by CNA type and programs. However, in the Search view, the filters account for all the CNAs within your organization whereas the My CNA tab only shows the CNAs that you yourself are working on. Above the set of quick filters, you can also search by selecting your own parameters. Notice the two search parameter fields at the top. 
In the top field, there's a drop-down menu which lists different parameters that you can search by. These are listed alphabetically. AMAS number, approving agency, assessment ID, date range, FHA number, legacy assessment ID, and these are for CNAs for which the data was transferred during the data transfer period that begins on July 27th. Another filter is the partner name, individual within the firm, property name, RAD pick number, staff name for HUD reviewer staff, and state where the property is located. Most of the search types are straightforward. For instance, if you select FHA number, you simply enter an FHA number in the field directly under the select search type field. Likewise, if you select partner name, you'd enter the partner name in the second field as well. One of the search parameters has additional subparameters, which is the date range. When you select the date range search parameter, a drop-down menu listing the types of date ranges appears in the second field, including CNA effective date, sent status change date, or last modified date. Then you enter the applicable range in the start and end date fields as shown. Then the search will bring up all the CNAs with the relevant dates that fall within the specified date range. So now that we've seen the user dashboard and understand its, its functions, we will go through how to navigate through the screens when you open a CNA. First, when you open a CNA by clicking on the blue assessment ID number, you will see a screen that looks like this. This is the first screen of your CNA, which is the CNA summary screen. You'll notice the following information, which will always stay at the top of the screen as you move through the CNA. The header displays some very useful information across the top of the screen, including property name, city in which the property is located, and FHA number or property number as relevant, the CNA type and program information, the status, whether it's been sent to your partner or is in your possession or submitted to HUD and currently under review, returned, or approved. And finally, a home button that you can click to close the CNA and return to your dashboard screen next to which you will see your own name and MID info as well. On this screen, there's also two important buttons, validate and options. Let's first talk about options. The options drop-down menu displays actions that the user can take that affect the CNA as a whole. The Options button is a great feature that we can discuss intermittently throughout this presentation. The actions available differ slightly depending on the user type and CNA type, but in general, the menus look like the two shown on the screen. The blue box on the left of the screen shows what submitters see in the Options menu, and on the, in the box on the right shows what the preparers will see. Submitters, as the CNA initiators, can submit CNAs to HUD, while, while preparers are limited to being able to send CNAs to partnering lenders or submitters. Both types of users can duplicate a CNA by selecting the view or the create a new version function and export the CNA data to a downloadable spreadsheet with the export this CNA function. Import from a CNA describes the ability to directly import certain sections of another CNA's data directly into the current CNA. You can delete a CNA from this section, but please be very careful if you do this, as once you've confirmed deletion of a CNA, it's gone. There is currently no undo button or a recycling bin. If you need to retrieve a deleted CNA, you would need to contact the CNA eTool support team. Crea creating a new version of the CNA or a duplicate CNA creates an exact replica of the original CNA 
with a new assessment ID number. For most user paths, once the submitter initiates the CNA and completes the CNA summary screen, he or she will send it to the preparer, who is generally the needs assessor. This action is referred to as sending the CNA to a partner. To send the CNA to the needs assessor, the submitter clicks on the Options button at the top right-hand side of the screen. From the drop-down menu, select so send the CNA. From the resulting drop-down menu, select the assessor organization or individual to which the CNA is to be sent. Then next, create, click Send CNA. The CNA will then automatically appear in the Needs Assessor Firm's dashboard under New Assignments Received. A few items to note are as follows. Once a partner firm is selected, it cannot be changed. If you send a CNA in the future, the partner firm will be automatically selected. Two, the needs assessor firms are listed in the dropdown. Each time a new organization registers as a preparer firm with secure systems, the new organization will be listed in the dropdown menu. And three, Appearance of an organization on the drop-down list is not an endorsement of that organization by HUD. I think you'll see from this screen that it's a lot easier for a lender to engage with a needs assessor through a few clicks within one system than it is to email the needs assessor, who then must download the Excel form to his or her computer to begin working on a CNA. The import from a CNA screen looks like this. The first step is to select the CNA that you want to import from. You can either search for it by filling out the search parameter fields as shown at the top of this slide, or you can select one from the list of available CNAs shown in the middle section. At the bottom of the screen is a list of the data screens that are currently available to import from. These include the following, unit types, buildings, components, and alternatives. More screens from which you will be able to import data will become available in the near future. Please note that this import feature is only available to the preparer user type. Exporting a CNA. When you select Export this CNA from the Options dropdown, the screen shown on this slide appears. Simply click on the screens and or validation data you wish to export and select Export. This will create an Excel spreadsheet with tabs for each of the screens you selected with columns for each field. Once in the data entry screens, you can navigate to different data and information screens by using the navigation sidebar tabs. At the very top of the sidebar, you'll notice two tabs, the assessment entry tab and the validation tab. Let's first talk about the assessment entry tab, where the data entry screens are listed vertically. You can consider these like the worksheet tabs in the Legacy Assessment Tool Excel file. The little icon on the left of the screen name that looks like a pencil on a sheet of paper indicates the screens that the user has edit and write access to or is responsible for. The left assessment entry tab pictured on this slide is what the submitters will see and you can see which screens the submitter, usually the lender, are responsible for completing. The assessment entry tab pictured on the right side of this slide is the preparers, or usually the needs assessor. As you can see by the edit icons shown, the bulk of the screens are to be completed by the preparer. Clicking on a data entry header in the list will take the user directly to that screen. Users can view the data in the screens for which they do not have edit rights 
but the actual data fields will be read only. Also accessible from the left sidebar is the validation tab. Clicking on the validation tab on the navigation bar will take you to the validated results screen. You do not validate the CNA from this menu bar. We'll discuss how to do that on the next couple of slides. Once you select the validation tab, the appearance of the screen changes, much like when you open a CNA from the dashboard and the input screens look different than the dashboard screen. You'll notice that the vertical list of screens will change to display various available screens, such as flags, repair needs, future needs, and financial schedule and estimate period recap. These screens display various validated results of your CNA. Again, we'll discuss this more shortly. To actually validate the CNA, you click on the Validate button located in the top header, which is always accessible no matter which screen you're on. Validating in the legacy eTool in order to see the calculated results from the data, the data entered entailed numerous steps. The data was entered or modified in the assessment tool Excel file. Then the user would go to either the public validation web portal or log into the lender's submission web portal. Then the Excel file had to be selected and uploaded to the website to validate. Any and all edits to the data required the user to go through all of these steps over and over again. In version 3.0, the Validate button is always available at the top of the CNA that you're working on. You can click to validate as often as you need to and see the immediate validated results to any data you enter or edit along the way. Clicking the Validate button takes you automatically to the validation screen and shows you the validation results. Using the left navigation sidebar, you can view different areas of validated results. There are several different list views accessible on this sidebar. Unlike the CNA dashboard, the left sidebar contains both filters and reports that you can click on to view. These views include flags view, and this view displays validation flags and is where you enter responses to those flags. The repair needs view, which is read only and displays a summary of repair needs. The future needs view, which is also read-only, which displays a summary of future needs. And then there's the financial schedule and estimate period recap, also which are read-only, which display the financial summary and schedule. This screen shows all of the flags. Notice that on the left-hand sidebar, you can select a flag type, either informational, warning, or severe, just like in the legacy system, to see only flags of that type listed on the main part of the screen. Unlike in the legacy system, in which flag notes had to be addressed in the submission portal and could not be saved there without saving it as a draft, the lender can now respond to flags directly within the web app from the flags listed after clicking on the validation tab. To respond to flags, simply select the green Respond to Flags button at the top right of the screen as shown on the previous slide. A response entry screen opens up which contains all of the information about the flag, including the ID, the number of instances, description, and why the flag occurred. Simply enter the response into the field shown and select Save. Select Cancel if you wish to delete the response. Tip, to navigate through the flags, simply use the blue forward and back arrows along the bottom edge. This slide shows how to view the property's repair needs. Simply click on Repair Needs and a table appears on the main portion of the screen. The table shown on the slide provides a summary of immediate repairs. The total repairs costs and repairs per unit costs are displayed for each category. This data comes from the 
Components, Alternatives, and Recommendations section, and the Decisions section. The following categories of immediate repairs are reported. Life safety remedies, accessibility remedies, accessibility remedies subcategory, immediate action, which are the remedies that must occur prior to closing, a subcategory called deferred, which are the accessibility remedies that may be completed within 12 months of closing, and non-critical needs. Also on the validation tab, you can click on future repairs to see the full life cycle of repairs over the estimate period. A future needs table will appear. This table contains cost data for every component that will require future replacements within a certain number of years as defined by the agency, typically 20 years. Each component with future needs will be listed under its component type. Not applicable indicates no component under that particular component type. And it will list the following information. You may need to use the scroll bars to see all the table rows and columns. Component type, selected alternatives, remaining useful life, estimated useful life, quantity, unit of measure, unit cost, one time subtotal, which is the total cost of replacing the component, yearly costs, which means the remaining columns break down the total cost by year. The costs in each year column only represents the cost of replacing that component for that specific year. The yearly costs are ca calculated based on the estimated useful life. Another tip is to view a larger image of the future needs table, click on the expand icon. To collapse the larger view, click on the collapse icon. The last view you can generate under the validation tab is the financial schedule and estimate period recap, which is similar to the panels in the legacy submission portal. The financial schedule is a table which contains a schedule of annual deposits to the reserve for replacement account, balances, and withdrawals for each year in the estimate period based on the CNA preparer's assumptions and the submitter's decisions. This table can be used to project future costs and to ensure that there are enough funds available to meet the required minimum balance for each year. The estimate period recap table contains an overall summary of reserve for replacement ba deposits, balances, and withdrawals for the entire estimate period, assuming that all of the physical issues of the property listed under components, alternatives, and recommendations are addressed. Note that the financial schedule builds in interest earned in the reserve for replacement account, as well as inflation factors. Okay, so we will now be showing you a video which will demonstrate how to create a CNA in the CNA eTool and navigate through the eTool. This video will walk CNA eTool users through the steps to create and complete a Capital Needs Assessment, or CNA. There are five steps to complete a CNA. One, initiate the CNA. Two, send the CNA to a partner. Three, prepare the CNA. Four, submit the CNA. Five, agency approval of the CNA. Step one, initiate the CNA. To start, a user logs into the Secure Systems website to access the new CNA eTool to initiate a CNA. The CNA must be initiated by someone from the organization that will eventually be submitting the CNA to HUD. Throughout this webinar, we will refer to this role as submitter. When submitters log in, they are directed to their personal user dashboard. On the dashboard, click on the green Start New Assessment button at the top right of the page. This directs the submitter to the CNA summary screen. 
The CNA eTool submitter will next be prompted to choose the approving agency. Currently, for most programs or events, the only option is HUD. Note, on all screens, the CNA eTool prompts the user to complete all of the required fields through the appearance of a red vertical bar on the left side of the field. A user will not be able to save entries on the screen unless all of the required fields are completed. The red bar may also indicate that there is an error in the answer provided which must be corrected before it can be saved. Next, choose the type of CNA. Different types of CNAs will be listed depending on the identity of the user. We're selecting Asset Development because in our example, the user is a lender working on a CNA for a new construction project. Following this, choose the program or event that best corresponds to the CNA. We're choosing the Low Income Housing Tax Credit 221-D4 pilot. Enter the FHA number or property ID number for the property. Fill out the property information and property contact information below and select save at the bottom of the screen to save information entered. After completing the CNA summary screen, the CNA submitter completes the participant screen by entering contact information for each of the partners involved with the CNA. Select the green Add New Participant button on the top right of the screen to enter participant information. Fill in each of the fields. Enter the role of the partner and select Save. Step 2 is to send the CNA eTool to the preparer. Once the CNA summary screen is completed, the Send This CNA becomes enabled and the submitter can send the CNA to the partner responsible for preparing the CNA. In some cases, the submitter may also assume the role of preparer and complete the rest of the CNA. A user can send a CNA to a preparer by selecting the Options drop-down menu at the top of the screen. Select Send this CNA, choose the needs assessor firm that will be assigned to complete the CNA, and press Send CNA. The assignment will appear on the preparer's new assignment received section of the dashboard. This establishes the submitter and preparer partnership for the CNA, and the CNA may freely be sent back and forth between the partners. It's important to note that once this partnership is established, the CNA cannot be sent to any other needs assessor firms, meaning a preparer cannot be switched for this CNA a whole new CNA must be initiated to send to a different preparer if the original partnership is terminated. Step three is to prepare the CNA. There are numerous sections of the CNA that will need to be completed by the preparer. These sections are listed on the left menu bar of the screen. The site screen is where users enter all the building sites that are included in the property. In most cases, there will be only one site. Click on the green Add New Site button to add a new site to the site table. Each site you create must be given a unique site name. The Unit Type section is where users enter all the types of units that can be assigned to buildings. Click on the green Add New Unit Type button to create a new unit type to be added to the Unit Type table. Enter a unique unit type name for each unit type created. The building screen is where users enter all of the property's buildings for each site. At least one building must be entered per site. Click on the green Add New Building button to add a new building to the buildings table. The Units and Common Spaces screen is where unit and common space information is entered for each building. Click on the building to which you want to assign previously created unit types and add common spaces in the building table. The Units section is where users specify the number of each unit type that exists in a building. 
Click on the green Add Unit Type to Building button to select and add a unit type. The Common Space section is where users name and describe the common spaces within a building. Click on the green Add Common Space to Building button to add a new common space. The Parking screen is where users enter information about parking. To begin entering parking information, select a site in the table. First, enter information about surface parking. Enter the surface area, type of surface, and other information shown on the screen. Then, click on the green buttons to add new in-unit garage spaces or add new common garage spaces. The Utility Types and Rates screen is where users enter information on the utilities used at the property. Click on the green Add New Utility button to add a new utility to the utility table. Use the Units Inspected screen to enter information about which specific units are to be and or were inspected. Click Add new inspection sample to add a new inspected unit. The Components, Alternatives, and Recommendations screen is where users list all the property's physical attributes, assign the alternatives for each component, and indicate the recommended alternatives. Click on the green Add New Component button to add a component. Fill in the component information and click Save. Following this, add the alternatives for that component by clicking on the green Add New Alternative button. Finally, select the recommended course of action for the component. The Narratives and Attachments screen is where users describe the condition of the property's physical attributes or other items that may require commentary. This screen provides space to enter any narrative that is pertinent to the CNA and is in addition to the information already provided in previous sections. Use the drop-down to indicate the ASTM outline topic you are writing about. Add attachments by clicking on the green Add New Attachment button. The Financial Factors section is where the CNA submitter specifies the parameters used to structure the financial plan for funding recommended future repairs and replacements. Enter data including the year one annual deposit per unit amount, initial deposit to reserve for replacement amount, and percent change in annual deposit. And finally, the Repair Replace Decision screen is where the CNA submitter decides what action to take for each component. After selecting a component, the submitter sees the component alternatives that were recommended by the preparer. The submitter has the option of confirming this recommendation or selecting a different alternative. For more detailed instructions on how to navigate the CNA eTool and complete a CNA, please reference the CNA eTool user guide and CNA eTool trainings that will be posted on the CNA eTool page of HUD's website and the HUD Exchange. Step 4 is to submit the CNA. Once all of the necessary screens have been completed by both the preparer and the submitter, the CNA submitter submits the CNA to the approving agency for review. Select the Validation tab and respond to any flags by clicking the green Respond to Flags button on the top right. Please note that the CNA may be validated at any point in the preparation process to see the validation results of the data entered. You may validate the CNA as often as needed. A CNA cannot be submitted if severe flags exist. Any data that cause severe flags must be corrected. The submitter should enter explanations and justifications for the informational and warning types of flags by clicking on the Respond to Flags button. Select the Options drop-down menu at the top of the page and select Submit CNA. This option will only appear once the CNA has been validated. 
Step five is to receive the agency review decision. Either HUD or USDA will review the CNA once it has been submitted. Once submitted, the CNA will appear under the With Agency section of the Submitter's Dashboard. The submitter will receive notification when the CNA is approved or returned requiring revision. The returned CNAs will have HUD's response notes for the flags and decision comments that communicate the approving agency's reasons for the return. Step six is to create a new version of the return CNA for revision and resubmission. CNAs in return status can no longer be edited. However, the submitter can select Create a new version in the Options menu and duplicate the return CNA. This new version may be edited and revised freely. Depending on the reasons for the return, the submitter may send the CNA to the original partner who prepared the CNA to make the edits. Once all the issues are addressed, the submitter can submit the CNA to the approving agency. For more information about navigating the CNA eTool, users may refer to the CNA eTool user guide, which will be available on the CNA eTool page of HUD's website once version 3.0 is launched. We hope you enjoyed that webinar, uh, the, the video, um, and it will be available within um, a week or so on the CNA eTool page of the HUD.gov website. So on this and the next slide, we provide a comparison with, between the legacy system and version 3.0 to highlight 3.0's benefits. In the legacy system, the needs assessor downloaded the Excel spreadsheet from the CNA eTool page of the HUD.gov website and completed the fields on his or her personal computer. The needs assessor validated the CNA by going to the public validation portal and uploading the Excel file. The assessor then had to email the Excel file along with all the attachments and photos to the lender. The lender had to upload the Excel file into the submission portal and work on it from there. However, in version 3.0, everything is done within one web applications. Files are sent between partners with a click of a button. There is no emailing of files. The Excel file do, files themselves were unwieldy with clunky forms and it was easy to make mistakes on them. The version 3.0 screens, however, are clean, intuitive, and easy to use with radio buttons, drop-down menus, date fields, and text fields. In the legacy system, there were often SQL errors and other data entry issues that were difficult to resolve. In version 3.0, if there is a particular way in which the data should be entered, the system guides you. If you make a mistake in a particular field, the system lets you know immediately through the appearance of a red vertical bar at the left side of the field in question. Here's some more comparisons. In the legacy system, if HUD sent back a CNA to a submitter in order for it to be resubmitted, the submitter had to type in all of the flag notes again and reattach all of the attachments. In version 3.0, if the approving agency returns a CNA to the submitter, the submitter merely makes a copy of the CNA. In the new submittable copy, the flag notes and attachments are already part of the file. In the legacy system, there is no one place in which you can easily determine what actions occurred with the CNA until it was uploaded into the submission portal. But because version 3.0 is self-contained, it allows for easy tracking of who has worked on a CNA, to whom and when it was sent, and any actions taken. So this ends the instructional portion of the webinar, but we'll now discuss some resources for the CNA eTool that are or will be posted soon to the CNA eTool page on the HUD.gov website. FHA lenders may receive assistance through the FHA Connection Help Desk. 
The email for the help desk is sfadmin at hud.gov. However, please note that if a lender's MID is terminated, it must be reactivated by the organization's coordinator. FHA connection support cannot do this. For all other groups besides lenders, help desk support is available to users who have issues with secure systems. This support is provided by the Public and Indian Housing Real Estate Assessment Center, also known as REAC Technical Assistance Center, or TAC. The help desk is available by phone at 1-888-245-4860 from Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. Eastern. The REAC TAC website URL is also shown on this slide. Again, that number is 1-888-245-4860. 4860. This slide shows the place where you can ask additional questions that come up after you've left this webinar. The Ask a Question or AAQ Virtual Help Desk is accessible through the CNA eTool page on HUD's website or through the HUD Exchange. You can go to the hudexchange.info website, then to Program Support, where you can ask access Ask a Question. Don't forget, however, that after you confirm who you are on step one, on step two, when the system asks you what your question's about, be sure to choose CNA eTool. When version 3.0 of the CNA eTool launches, there will be resources available on the CNA eTool page of the HUD.gov website. Actually, some of these are available now. There will be a new CNA eTool user guide that walks the reader through how to navigate through the input screens and other important issues regarding the tool's functionality. A user access guide, which includes a lot of the information described in the first webinar, Getting Started, is currently available. The web-based training modules that were developed and posted to the HUD Exchange when the legacy tool was introduced have been updated to reflect how version 3.0 works. These modules will be accessible on or near the launch date of version 3.0. Okay, well, thank you very much for attending this webinar, and we hope you look at all of the resources that are or will be posted on the CNA eTool homepage on HUD.gov. So thanks again for attending today and have a great rest of your day.